Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and welcome to the week 8 bye week special here for the 2015 NFL season with Joe Nero, his rookie season here in the NFL. What we're going to be doing with this is kind of looking at the team stats, looking at our individual stats for the players, looking at the rest of the league, checking out the news, checking some of the transactions, just seeing what is going on within the league. As well as we're doing a little bit of game prep, but that's really just, you know, the game prep really isn't anything. We go to earn player XP. This is why I never show it. I usually, I try to get my confidence up, but you see my confidence, it's already through the roof because we're on a four game winning streak. So I just go here to this game prep, right? And I select like, Joe Nero, yep, that's me. Start activity, and bam, I got uh, 91 experience. Cool. So that, that was all 60 of my hours. Yeah, so there is, it really isn't a whole lot of developmental stuff I can do. Uh, you do actually have the ability to uh, do in-game drills, which could be nice. But free practice, which is available in regular franchise, is not available if you're controlling a player for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Which I wish it was, because that way I could actually you know practice plays with my team as a quarterback. you think that'd be beneficial, but for whatever reason, it's locked. Hopefully they fix that sometime in the future. Let's spend a little bit of XP, and let's check out some stats and see where our team is actually at. I've noticed I've been doing a little bit better since I started increasing my overall or, or to my awareness. So that's been helping. I'm just going to keep on increasing it. Hopefully it uh, continues to benefit me. Let us check out the stats, shall we, for... The NFL right now, the Redskins at four and three. It, this NFC East, it's not playing games. The NFC East is ridiculous right now. Cowboys four and two, Giants four and three, Redskins four and three, Eagles just behind there in three and four. It is going to be a very competitive division. Every single game is going to matter. And if you look at our schedule up here, we're going to be at New England after this, which could be pretty tough. Then we're going to be playing host to the Saints, which I have a feeling this streak that we have where our defense is kind of carrying us, I have a feeling it's not going to be happening as much uh, against the Saints and the Patriots, but you never know. Let's go ahead and check out some stats. See where Joe Nero is partway through the season. As you can see, I'm 10th in the NFL in passing yards, 21st in passing touchdowns, 40th in passer rating. Uh, it's pretty bad. Alfred Morris is 42nd in rushing touchdowns. Jordan Reed is 4th in the NFL in receiving yards and 15th in receptions. Not bad, not bad. No, of course, we can actually see full-on things. I have no legacy, so if you're wondering why I'm down here with all these random players, it's because I have zero legacy so far on my character, or my player. All right, here we are with the statistics. Joe Nero, rookie quarterback out of Pittsburgh, came on as an undrafted free agent. The Washington Redskins lit up the camp, lit up the preseason, and thus was named the starter over the likes of Colt McCoy, Robert Griffin III, and Kirk Cousins. Has been doing decent, not so great, but he has led them on a four-game win streak, so who knows, maybe he's actually doing something right. 1,619 yards so far through seven games, six touchdowns through seven games, and nine interceptions, which uh, 71 yards is our longest pass completion. We have been sacked 24 times, and we're completing 56% of our passes. So through, through the second half of the season here, I would definitely like to increase the completion percentage a bit. I would like to not turn over the ball as much and try to get my receivers a bit more involved. I say that every game, and I'm trying my best to get better at it. Difficult to do with the run game and being as lackluster as it has been so far throughout the season. Alfred Morris averaging a very, very mediocre 2.8 yards a carry. Although with the last game, if you guys caught the last episode of this playthrough, he did do a lot better running the ball, which uh, obviously helped out a lot. That was a big part of why we ended up getting that big lead in the first half there. We ended up getting 21 unanswered points in the second quarter. And part of that was Alfred Morris just out of nowhere smashing through breaking tackles. You see him averaging 36 yards a game and me averaging 16. And Silas from the backfield like as a backup running back averaging 9 yards a carry. It's You, know, you can see why it, we've been struggling a bit because we basically have no run game to speak of. I kind of am the run game averaging almost 6 yards a carry and running in 3 touchdowns as a quarterback. So obviously I would like for these guys to do a little bit better with that and you go down here we did try running two different end arounds and both went for a negative three yard cane so yeah we're not gonna be running any more end arounds <laughs> they never seem to actually work um yeah this has been the run game we actually ha i have had some fumbles i did fumble i did break a tackle but there you go alfred morris he's starting to break more tackles especially after that last game like seriously like it feels like 10 of his 15 broken tackles came in that last game like he was just randomly a beast jordan reed's broken a couple of tackles uh, ball catching the ball, but uh, yeah, see 20 yard carries, two for Joe Nero, two for Alfred Morris. Uh, the longest carry of the season for Alfred Morris was that 34 yarder last week, and Joe Nero with 22. And we've all, of course, played seven games. Let's check out the receivers. I betcha Jordan Reed's up top. 
uh, and he is. Holy crap. Jordan Reed, man. This guy is, is this guy is my best friend. He's averaging 88 yards a game. I'm throwing to him constantly. Apparently, Alfred Morris off of screen passes and such is my number two receiver. I did not see that coming. But, uh, yeah, look at these stats here. Passing touchdowns. Alfred Morris is my number one touchdown catcher, apparently. And freaking Jamison Crowder, who caught the 71-yard touchdown. Who remembers that play? It was a beautiful, a nice, crispy 4th and 35 in garbage time. And we went for it. He got a 71-yard touchdown out there. It's a rookie receiver from Duke. That was his only catch of his career. And he took it 71 yards and a touchdown. If, that, if, if the stats say anything, I need to give him the ball more. Because every time I give him the ball, he takes it for a touchdown. So we need to give him the ball definitely a lot more. Pierre Garçon. Doing okay. Him and Deshaun Jackson. I wish I could give them the ball more. Like, I... You know, they're both averaging, you know, 30 yards a game, 23 yards a game. Uh, Andre Roberts, our slot receiver, 20 yards a game. I mean, my fullback, Daryl Young here, is averaging almost as much as these guys. And, like, I, I want to get them the ball more, but just how I've learned to play Madden is, you know, slant routes, short passes, you know. And a lot of those short passes are going to be going to my tight end, going to my running backs and stuff. I like to get them involved definitely a lot, as you can see with Alfred Morris and Jordan Reed here. Jordan Reed, obviously, just dominating the freaking league as a tight end here, so... I want to get them more involved. It just, I have to get better as a quarterback, I think, for that to really uh, start to happen. But, uh, yeah, these are all the receiving stats. Is there anything, anything in here that I can see, like, drops? No, it's not going to show drops. All right, so who has the longest average run after the catch, huh? Who's going to be? Besides him, because he took it 71 yards on touchdown. Alfred Morris off of screens. Okay, Reed. Uh, Logan Paulson, okay. So let's check out uh, blocking, which I'm not too interested in blocking, to be honest, but we'll see. Uh, so left tackle and left guard, a lot of my sacks come from the blind side, it would appear. Right tackle and center as well. So mostly I'm getting blindsided by sacks. Uh, go to the defense, and here we go. Here we go. This is the defense that has been shutting down opponents. Uh, Jason Hatcher and Trent Murphy both have 5.5 sacks. We have a decent amount of sacks, not a ridiculous amount. Uh, go to interceptions here. Four for D'Angelo Hall. All right, D'Angelo Hall is the one getting all those interceptions. Do you have any fumble recoveries? Forced fumbles, things of that nature too. So we have two fumble recoveries. And no defensive touchdowns, no safeties, nothing like that. So kicking, Kai Forbath has been amazing. We actually have been able to see how this game works. We are able to see all the field goals and such. So he's 12 for 12 field goal wise, and he hasn't missed an extra point. Doing, doing very good. Just being amazing, really. And Tress Way, surprisingly, I don't know if he's supposed to be one of the best punters in the league, but he's doing a very good job. 53 yards a punt, and a lot of time, you know, he's putting, he's putting them down within the 20, so that's definitely nice. Uh, six of them are down there within the 20. He did have nine touchbacks, but uh, for the most part, he had an 88-yard punt. When was that? When did I... Mi I don't recall this 88-yard punt. <laughs> Maybe I missed that. I don't know. But uh, kick returning, uh, we're getting to the end of the stats here. We're going to start checking out some actual transaction stuff. These are the kick return stats so far. Basically, Sean Jackson's our number one kick returner, but they're not kicking at him for a reason. So Jamison Crowder is basically getting the majority of the kick returns. But the Sean Jackson did take back a punt for 71 yards and a touchdown in one of our games. So that was pretty nice. So those were the stats so far for the Washington Redskins. Things are doing okay. And uh, actually, one of the things I wanted to show you, because I read it in the uh, in the news category, I'm not entirely sure where I need to go. Transactions. There we go. We can see the transactions that are going on throughout the league. So I do plan on going multiple seasons with this series. If you guys would like to continue watching it, I'll continue making it. And so we kind of want to pay attention to what's happening throughout the league. So the Chargers have re-signed Phillip Rivers. Good and dandy, right? 49ers traded Amon Brooks to the Falcons. Eagles signed a punter. They released Donnie Jones, their other punter. Huh. Bengals got Billy Cundiff. Vikings signed a new fullback and released their punter. Eagles have signed no Sean Marino. Okay, so they traded um, Darren Sproles to the Cowboys, which is an in-division trade, which you don't really see that often. And then they signed no Sean Marino as a backup. That's interesting. Buccaneers got rid of Billy Cundiff. I like looking through here. Yeah, see, here it is. So the Cowboys got rid of Darren McFadden, and they traded... Uh, for Darren Sproles, and they end up getting... Uh, Eagles got a third-round pick. That's it? A third-round pick? For well, I guess it's not terrible. I would like to have Darren Sproles as our backup running back. That'd be fun. Um, let's see here. The Bengals trade A.J. McCarron to the Bills, and the Bills released Matt Sims. 
you know, these just little, just little things like this. So I like looking through this kind of stuff. And here's the big thing. This is the only piece of news for our team itself is Redskins have re-signed fullback Daryl Young to a five-year, $9.42 million contract. So Daryl Young will always be our fullback, assuming we don't randomly cut him, which I love him. That guy has never dropped a pass. He's always seemed to just do very, very well for me. And, um, yeah, we look at the standings here. This is how it's going. So far, if we actually had to like have rankings, so if the playoffs were to start today, we would not. Oh no, we would be. We would actually be in the playoffs. I think it was a top eight to actually make it in for each conference. And right now, the Seahawks at six and one. The Cowboys are up there, but so are the Redskins and the Eagles. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of us up here. So the NFC is definitely competitive, with the exception of the Seahawks, which are six and one and just dominating. How good are the Patriots doing? Please say not great. Patriots are 4-2. They're not doing amazing, but uh, I have a feeling our next game against New England is going to be pretty rough. I don't think it's going to be necessarily the easiest game in the world, but, um, you know, we'll have to see. We can check out the stats. Let's see how old, let's see how old Tom's doing. Let's see how great he's doing. The, the, the Patriots. Tom Brady. Tom's having a good season. <laughs> Holy crap, Tom's having a good year. Brandon Bolden, all right, so they're doing like a running back by committee kind of a thing here. Tom Brady's ran the ball 32 times, I don't believe it. <laughs> and so they definitely have a three-way running back thing going on here with uh, this cadet guy taking all the touchdowns, which has to be super annoying for the guys to do all the work, like Blunt and Bolden, but <laughs> whatever. All right, Gronkowski's not doing amazing. But yeah, I definitely think we're going to have a bit of difficulty against the New England Patriots, which is going to be next week. If you're looking for... Um, uh, if you're looking for, like, how my guy's doing in terms of there, it is legacy over. I don't know why I was looking for legacy. I was looking over there. But uh, this is my legacy so far. I have zero legacy. How they did it in uh, the other games is you would get legacy basically just for playing. But it's a bit different now. You kind of have to actually do things to actually get ranked higher in the legacy board. So, obviously, I'm zero. I haven't done anything. But you can do little things. Like, if I were to throw for three touchdowns in a game, I would get one legacy for that, right? I'd get some bonus XP, and I would get some legacy. So, you can do things like that, but... Uh, for the most part, I'm down here with David Fails, uh, Sean Renfrey, and Dylan Thompson. <laughs> I've never heard of any of these people. So right now, I, I apparently have no legacy. But if I can win Offensive Rookie of the Year, if I can maybe make the playoffs, you know, things like that, that would definitely help out the legacy. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we can do that. And I think that's how that's what we're going to be doing for this. I think we're going to be ending off this little mini episode where we kind of just showed the stats and things that are going on. We'll go check out the news. Right, we'll read what's going on here in the news for the league. Let's see. The Colts take on the Panthers in a battle. That's interesting. Let's go to my stories because I actually want to see things that are involving me. Joe Nero putting in time and practice. They basically make a story every time I do a practice, which is kind of silly. Uh, big win for the Redskins, but I guess every win in the NFL is a big win. Chris Mortensen says, if the hashtag Redskins defense can keep us up, their D will be hard to deal with. I agree. Their defense has been pretty fantastic, and reports from practice are that Joe Nero continues to turn heads. He is looking more impressive with every snap he takes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to conclude our little bye week episode of the Madden NFL 16 playthrough. I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating and stay tuned for next episode where we take on the big and scary New England Patriots. We are at home, so we will have home field advantage, but we still have the New England Patriots to deal with. Hopefully, we can get out there with a win, putting us up at 5-3. and three. If not, we'll drop down to 4-4, four and four. and in this very competitive conference, that's definitely not going to be a good thing. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.